check out this beautiful all white PC build. It's sleek, it's luxurious, and it's incredibly powerful for the price. For around $500, you too can build your very own all white custom gaming PC that will have you playing Cyberpunk and Helldivers 2. It might even land you a few looks next time you're at the LAN party with your friends. You do have friends, don't you? So grab a notepad and take some notes on all the hardware necessary to recreate this budget PC beast right after this video sponsor. When you install Windows on your Steam Deck or any other PC for that matter, you're gonna need to activate it to unlock all the settings. Why spend a ton of money for a code when you can use the sponsor of today's video, SCD Key? You can purchase Windows keys at a large discount, and to get 25% off your order, use code JASON, that's J-A-S-O-N, to get 25% off your order. After purchasing, you'll get your code pretty much instantly and be able to unlock your computer's full potential. And remember that all Windows 10 Pro users can upgrade to Windows 11 for free at any time in the future using these keys. Just take your code, go to your Windows activation menu, pop it in, and boom. Windows is activated, and you should be on your way thanks to SCD Key. As always, let's start this video with some quick ground rules. All the products in this video were obtained online from the USA. So while you may be able to recreate this PC in your home country, I can't promise the prices will be anywhere close. And speaking of price, they change every single day. One day a product is $50, the next it's 60, and then the next is 20. I can't control what people charge for their products day to day, I can only share what I paid personally for them. So don't use this video as a complete one-to-one -one guide if you have a very strict budget. Use it as a jumping off point or to obtain some ideas on components you may want to incorporate into your next budget build. To start off this beautiful all-white PC, let's start with the case. There are a lot of options for white cases in this budget, all with various levels of quality, but I knew I wanted it to be under $60, have RGB fans already included, and be all white as opposed to mostly white. Lucky for me, there was a sale for the case I chose over at BNH Photo, which is a website that is usually known for selling camera equipment, but I have started stocking computer component in the last few years. This is the Fractal Design Pop Air, a gorgeous quality case made by a company that is renowned for manufacturing some premium chassis, 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 cases. The Pop Air has an aesthetic honeycomb mesh design on the front to promote good airflow, a bountiful of front IO options including Type-C, a toolless tempered glass panel, and it comes equipped with three RGB fans out of the box. Fractal has been in the upper echelon in terms of case quality for nearly their entire company's life, and I'd say that this case is no different, and it was very easy and fun to build in. I grabbed this case on sale from B&H for 60 bucks, which is an absolute steal for a chassis of this quality. Now the power slide I picked up is this MSI MAG A550BN, an absolutely just solid power supply from MSI that comes in at 550 watts. It's got black cables out of the box and not those disgusting ketchup and mustard style ones. And it has a five year warranty. The only downside is that it's not modular at all. So you'll just have to shove all the extra cables down in the PSU basement. But that's pretty much expected when you're building budget PCs. This power supply can be found for 50 bucks brand new on Amazon, but I was lucky enough to get mine from Amazon Warehouse for only $40 and it's just as good as new. SSD prices are totally inflated right now. And the only one on Amazon that is normally priced and from a company I've actually heard of is still the MSI M450. I'm sure you've seen me use this in recent videos, but honestly, it's just the best that's readily available right now. It's fairly priced and it has good speeds. It's a Gen 4 NVMe drive that advertises the speeds up to 3600 MBS. I grabbed this 500 gig one for 30 bucks, which is a good starting point for a budget build. But if you have a little more money, I recommend bumping up to at least one terabyte to start. Now the CPU was kind of tricky for this build. I wanted to make something that wasn't like a Xeon from AliExpress and had at least some kind of upgrade path. I decided to pick up this i3 12100F, which is a fantastic Intel CPU from 2020 that despite being an i3 is really powerful for the price. It's a four core, eight thread CPU that can boost to 4.3 gigahertz, so it can handle most entry level and mid range graphics cards and pump out some surprisingly strong performance. It runs on the LGA 1700 chipset, so you can later upgrade to any 12th, 13th, and 14th gen CPU and be just fine. The only downside is that since this is the F variant, it doesn't have integrated graphics, and it's not like we're using them for gaming, but it can be useful for troubleshooting GPU issues in the future. I grabbed this used on eBay for only $75, but it's available brand new on Amazon for about $20 more and it comes with a CPU cooler that is good enough. The CPU we got on eBay didn't come with the cooler, but that's okay because I wanted my cooler to be white for this build, but if you don't care about that, just buy it brand new and use the supplied cooler. It's good enough. 
So I needed to find a CPU cooler and any single fan, four heat pipe, air CPU cooler would work. So I grabbed this white Zalman CNPS 9X. It looks great, comes with an ARGB fan and should cool effectively. Zalman was having a weird sale where I got the CPU for 17 bucks and it came with a tube of their thermal paste for free. Pretty weird, but hey, you can never have too much thermal paste. But check this out. Here's you. And here's the guy she told you not to worry about. Why is it red? The motherboard I paired with this was originally going to be an H610M, but that chipset can't really handle anything above an i5. And I wanted to have an easy path to upgrade to in the future with little stress. So I eventually landed on this B660M Pro from ASRock. I know it's not all white, but there are a few options for motherboards that are all white and they're all pretty expensive. But hey, it's just a motherboard and it's mostly gray and black, so it should just blend into the background. The B660M has room for four RAM sticks, a single Gen 4 NVMe slot, and it even has some built-in RGB backlight. This motherboard should be able to handle any CPU you throw at it in the future, and it has all the features we need today. I got this motherboard for $75 from Amazon Warehouse, but you can usually find it brand new for $95. The RAM I got for this is 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM clocked at 3600 megatransfers per second. It's got an all-white aesthetic and even has RGB. I paid a little extra for these compared to what a boring pair of RAM would normally cost, but I really wanted a certain aesthetic for this build, and I think it's okay to pay a little extra for RGB if it fits in your budget. These are from a brand called Glowway, which aren't as widely known compared to big names like Crucial and Corsair, but I've used Glowway in the past and their customer support was surprisingly good. So I trust the RAM with my life. Well, maybe not my life, but I'd let them drive me to the airport when I was running late. This pair of RAM sent me back only $42, brand new from Amazon. And last, but certainly not least, is the graphics card. I wanted to pick a card that fit in my budget and be one that I've never used before. So I went back to AliExpress and picked up this all-white RX 6600M, which is an 8GB VRAM card that is a little complicated to explain, but looking at all the data, the performance is very comparable to a box-standard RX 6600. For a little cheaper, I could have bought an RX 5700 XT and probably get a little better performance. But the biggest difference between these two cards is the power consumption, with the 6600M pulling a considerable lower amount of energy. I'm excited to see just how well this card performs because I've never used it before, but I have heard a lot of very good things. I picked this up on AliExpress for only $170, but if you just want to buy a brand new 6600 from Amazon, they run about $210 brand new. And now for the optional part of this build. Our power supply has black cables, so it wouldn't be the end of the world if we just plugged them in, but I want to do all the white I can, so I picked up some PSU extensions to make the build look a little cleaner. They won't impact performance of any kind, but they will impact your budget since they will generally set you back $15 to $20. Now that wraps up all the hardware for this gorgeous build. Let's get some glamour shots of this bad boy and do some benchmarks to see how well it stacks up.
I really love how this PC came out, and I think the performance is pretty fantastic at the price point. There's ample room for upgradeability, and we didn't have to skimp on looks to get maximum FPS. As always, feel free to copy this build directly, but I don't usually recommend that. There are always random sales happening and good deals popping up in your local area, so use this build as a jumping off point or to get some ideas on some components you want to use in the future. If $500 is a little out of your budget, check out these videos where we build beast mode PCs at even lower price points. Thank you to all my patrons, and click the link in the description if you're interested in supporting independent creators like me and getting extra perks like early access to videos and some one-on-one -on -one time with yours truly. Click the like button below if you like the video and get subscribed for more technology content. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching.